Welcome to Living Beyond Linear Radio Show, an exploration of what is beyond logical and explainable that actually empowers each of us to be creating, living, and loving our lives. What if the life that actually works for you makes no sense, is totally unpredictable, and goes way outside the box of conventionality? Would you let yourself have it? Would you like to be creating your life for more of what is truly possible? Join your host, Keisha Clark, for this week's adventure in Living Beyond Linear. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this great, big, amazing, magical, delicious, wonderful, never boring planet. Hello and welcome to (laughs) Living Beyond Linear Radio Show. I am your host, Keisha Clark, and I have a guest today, and I'm going to introduce my amazing guest in just a moment. And first, I just want to give you a little bit of a way to join us, uh, because we would love for you to come play with us. You can come into the chat room. Hello to all of the beautiful people who are in the chat room already. Um, It is always a fun party in the chat room. It's kind of, you can think of it as coming backstage. And uh, all you have to do is click on the word chat room in the blue bar near the top of the screen, any screen on Inspired Choices Network. Woo woo! And give yourself a name. It can be yours or anyone else's. It's not an IQ test. Uh, Well, at least not that I'm aware of. (laughs) And come on in. (laughs) Join us. Can be. (laughs) If it is, hey! I have multiple personalities all the time, so I come into the chat room with different people, and you can too. Um, So that's a fun way to join us. And if at some point you want to call in, you can find the call-in numbers to the left of the screen from the chat room screen. You can also see them near the top center of any screen on Inspired Choices Network. And um, we would just love for you to come play with us because today we're talking about could you be a kindness ninja? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's just fun to say. Could you be a kindness ninja? Hmm, a oh, ninja of kindness. need to get kindness. your sexy sauce on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a kindness ninja with sexy sauce. Now, that could We might go into two episodes at this point. But <laughs> so if you don't recognize that funny voice, that beautiful man that is on the line with me, his name is Alan Jones. And um, we have actually uh, dedicated today as Awesome Alan Day on Inspired Choices Network. If you if you got to tune in early this morning or earlier this today for wherever you are in the world, um, you got to hear Alan talking to Christine McIver on the Open Mic Spotlight Show, where she was diving into all things Alan Jones, and it was a beautiful conversation. And I am so grateful for all that you contribute, Alan, for the fact that I just get to play with you. You get to be one of my playmates. I get to be one of yours. It's awesome. So welcome, awesome Ellen, to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Keisha, so very much for inviting me to, to play on this show. It, as you say, it is always a pleasure to play with you and, and to have you in my world. I am I am super grateful, even though there are no tears in my eyes. I am super grateful. And, um, and uh, you know, I love playing with your sexy sauce, because that's what you oh, do. Your sexy you, sauce brought in my Friday, girl. <laughs> My pleasure, hon. My pleasure. <laughs> so what What the heck is a kindness ninja, some people might be wondering. And um, this actually shown, showed up uh, from a, or really in the course of a conversation you and I were having. I have the, the esteemed pleasure and honor of being a guest on a series that Alan will be launching beginning February 1st, and it's called Kick-Ass Kindness. And... Um, the more we played with it, um, the more I was like, oh, I want to, I want to, I want to do something more than post this on Facebook. So I wanted to share it on my show. And of course, it's been a long while since I got to have you on my show. And now my show has a new name. So it's like, it is time to bring Mr. Alan Jones on the show again. Um, so we were playing with, um, this Kick-Ass Kindness series, and I'm going to let you tell folks all about it, um, the, the interviews mm. have, will be done via video, so you'll get to start seeing the videos on February 1st. And if you have not already signed up to be getting those videos, you can just click on the link. It will be on this replay page um, below the text, or below the video, rather, and you can go sign up for that. And, of course, Alan's going to tell you some more about what he's doing in the world and how you can play more with him a little bit later in the show. Um, so what do you get when you combine kindness with consciousness? 
no, that's not a test mm. question, so don't worry, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, have you, yeah, have you ever experienced kindness in a way that totally surprised you? And what did that create in your world? Hmm. So what if kindness is really a potency that we have long overlooked? And what if you know way more about it than you have ever acknowledged? And what if you have secret ninja skills with kindness that are ready to be activated now? <laughs> so I wonder what we can change, we can create, we can maybe even destroy with kindness today. And what if your kindness does not have to make any sense to be truly kind to you? And wow, you are you bring a kindness, Alan, that is it it I love how it sneaks up on me and surprises me consistently. Um, it it it's 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 just it's lovely. And so first I want to thank you for that. And I want to ask you first, what is kindness for you? What where did the kindness thing become a big part of your life and your adventure? Um for folks who might not be aware of who you are and how you play. God, wow. Um do you know, uh it's only really been in the last God, I guess twelve 12 to 20, yeah, about 12 months that I've really, really, no, I've talked, no, that's not true. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place. <laughs> so, let, I, because I, it, sometimes it could be easier to tell a bit of story. You know, kindness was not something okay. that, that featured in my world for most of my life. It was, it was niceness and doing the right thing, which often is misconstrued as, as kindness. So, mm-hmm. I've only really started to explore kindness I guess really in the last two two to three years, and most specifically since starting the radio, my own radio show, where Tamara Yunker and I, you know, we kind of play with all sorts of stuff, and it's really Tamara who yeah. kind of really inspired me to to start looking at what actually, because I knew I, there was something I was looking for in the world. I've always been looking for and trying to create as much as I could kindness, even though I didn't necessarily realize at the time that's what I was looking to create. And it was only when, you know, kind of playing with Tamara that I started to get more of a uh, of a perception and grasp on, oh, wow, it's actually kindness that I've been searching for all my life. And mm. almost as if kindness is something that you can only ever receive from other people rather than wow, yeah. from being for yeah right <laughs> rather than being for ourselves, and you know kindness is something you do to other people you're really ki- you're you're such a kind person, and what really make people mean when they say that to you is you give me what I want, you're such mm-hmm. a kind person, you're always doing stuff for other people, you're so kind. And then when you look at these people who are, you know, kind of quotes kind to other people, they really, um, they, you know, they're not necessarily, not all of them, that's supposed to be fair, they're not all like that, but, but, you know, a lot of people I've seen who do stuff for other people, they neglect themselves, they neglect their body, they don't look yeah. after themselves, they wear themselves yeah. into the ground, running around after other people, and, you know, always putting other other people first, it's like, Kindness yeah. has to include you in the equation. Has to. Yeah. Yeah. And I know we've had several conversations about being nice uh, and and how really nice is one of those words that has all kinds of interesting energies in the original usage of the word or applications of the word that is very different uh, from what we try to make it these days. And And is that – so when we're functioning from that – trying to give people what they want. Yeah, is that really a kindness in actuality? Mm. Well, you know? absolutely. And I and I think and that's a really great question because if somebody asks you for something and you um feel obliged to give it to them, where's the kindness to you? But also, yeah. If someone is looking to make you the source of what they can receive and from the place that they can receive it, rather than than them honoring and empowering themselves to know, do you know what, I can create anything myself. It's like when we make anybody else the source of our creation and that person colludes with it by giving it to you, it's like, oh, it's just easier to give it to him or her. That's actually not Mm -hmm. a kindness because you're keeping that person stuck and disempowered 
and not in a pl- in a space of being able to acknowledge themselves the potency that they can mm-hmm. be the choice you know the power of their own choices to create what they would like in the world it's it's so yes it can be great mm-hmm. to gift stuff to people most definitely mm-hmm. but if you become the mm-hmm. source of somebody else's anything it could be somebody else's happiness it could be somebody else's you know kind of uh, i don't know you're the source of somebody else's money you're the source of somebody else's security mm-hmm. any way you do that for people i wonder is and i would just invite people actually is that a kindness to them is it a kindness to you to put so much pressure mm-hmm. on yourself to be the provider and i and i get that for many oh. men yeah, right and and for, you know it's not to say that women don't do this too but, but traditionally men have been the providers the, of the money of the mm-hmm. home of the security and the women of the being the providers of the nurturing and the kind, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And we've had these roles. I just look at them and go, <laughs> is that kind to force ourselves to comply with stereotypes and, uh, you know, to be the provider or be uh, of whatever it is that we've decided only I yeah. can provide in this relationship? Is that a kindness? And I, I don't get that it necessarily is. Yeah, for that me. is really heavy. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. for me too. I love that you brought this up. Um, you know, I was in in my relationship that I was in, uh, well, until about three or four years ago. Um, I chose to be in the, the, I'm doing air quotes, in the role of the, the provider or the primary income earner. Mm-hmm. And um, I, it was not something I really wanted to, to choose in the way that I chose it. So so I it's not that I didn't desire to contribute to the relationship. Um I just I, I what I can say now, hindsight being so beautifully twenty twenty <laughs> is um where I was choosing from was not a place of including myself in the equation really. Um mm. and I was also choosing from pressure from the we have to make this, you know, this has to work. We, we, we require money to live and blah, blah, blah. So I made the choices I made, and I, I, one of the things I chose was to, to work full-time again <laughs> um, in a sort of regular job, quote-unquote. And over the course of uh, roughly a decade, I exhausted me. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the things that I came away from that experience with was a very different appreciation, a very different awareness of exactly what you were talking about, the whole, this establishment of these roles and how very commonly, uh, up until the the 80s at least, mid-80s, men were, there was just this massive expectation that men were supposed to perform and produce Mm -hmm. financially as well as otherwise. And I had a very different... um, I just gained so much insight and it, and it wasn't about making either, you know, men or women right or wrong. That, like you say, that wasn't it. It was just a very different awareness of how many, um, how many, well, for me, it was like, you know, how many times have I played the role? How many times have I shown up in a male em- embodiment and bought into that? This is what the definition of manhood and manliness and masculinity is. You know, mm-hmm. and have have I perpetuated that insanity? And how many times have I played the role in a as a woman that perpetuated that insanity? You know, from from a different perspective. And so it was really fascinating because it was not kind at all. It wasn't kind to me. It wasn't kind to my partner at the time. It wasn't kind to any of the people that I was attempting to contribute to because it wasn't coming from the 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 energy of of what I truly had. There wasn't a plentifulness there. Like, I, I didn't have a source. Mm. So it is interesting that 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 is a very big and long-standing um, kind of part of our tradition, you know, <laughs> the, the way cultures have been established. So, um, wow. And, and, I, and that's part of where the first question of our show post came from. What do you get when you combine kindness with consciousness. Mm. And so bringing that consciousness to the table, what have you found for you um, that has changed? Wow. What have, what's changed me with kindness and consciousness? 
I mean, the, the two of those in and of themselves are so massive. Um, and are they even separate? You know, right? Can I? Can, yeah, right. Can I even distinguish between? And I wouldn't want to. I really wouldn't want to try and define. You know, the uh, the difference between mm-hmm. kindness and consciousness because I, I don't think that they are separate. And so for me, consciousness is about being present. Consciousness is about receiving everything. Consciousness is about um, about honoring and trusting. And, and you know, it, it's all of that stuff. It's so many things. And any time we try to eliminate anything from consciousness, it's not a kindness. And, you know, this, this is where people, yeah, and this is where it starts to get kind of a little bit kind of uh, glitchy for people and funky is, Consciousness includes everything. Everything. It includes murder. It includes, you know, it's like, and it judges none of them. These are just choices. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying it's kind to go around murdering people, right? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> no. I, what I'm saying is, it's like consciousness includes everything and judges nothing. And as if there's, if there's anything at all that we're judging, we're excluding it. And anytime we're excluding anything, we're actually being unkind. I know this is probably frying people's brains. Um, you know, it's frying mine as I'm even trying to, you know, because I've never really tapped in it to <laughs> articulate what it is where I'm going with this. So for me, the more willing I am to be present with all my choices, the more willing I am to be present with me, the more willing I am to be to receive all of me with no judgment, the more willing I am to choose for mm. me what is kind for me without... Because here's the thing about kind of the whole choosing thing. When we choose what's kind for us and what's caring for us, that doesn't mean that we're choosing against somebody else. You know, in this mm-hmm. reality, there is very much, you know, if I'm choosing for you, I'm choosing against me. If I'm choosing for me, I'm choosing against you. Choosing for you doesn't have to preclude, you know, the kindness for other people. It, you know, not yeah. murdering you is a choice that I make for my ease, but it also means that you're not going to die. <laughs> So, you know, so that for me has been my willingness to be curious. And for me, curiosity is kindness. When I'm curious, you know, I was I was on the open mic slot earlier on and I was talking to uh, Christine and we were. Well, I know it's so much fun. And um, (laughs) and we were talking about that, um, that willingness to look. So consciousness and kindness in terms of how I treat myself is looking at stuff where perhaps I've made a choice that doesn't, that didn't kind of turn out the way I expected and probably was a little bit painful. (laughs) And I look at it and go, wow, okay, I made that choice. And rather than forcing myself to go into that space of, I really should be changing that, not making that again, I'm now in that space of kindness and consciousness to be able to look at it and go, wow, I chose that. Would I like to change Mm -hmm. it? It's not, you know, I just a case that. of, like, yeah, you know, I have to change this. That for me is kindness and consciousness is about looking at it going, okay, consciousness includes everything. And if at the moment that means, you, you know, d- doing something that perhaps isn't the greatest contribution to me, yeah, okay, it's not kind, but neither is it kind to try and force myself to change something that right there in that 10 seconds, I'm not really willing to change. And when yeah. I get that space, oh, yeah. when, I'm in that, right, when I'm in that space of allowance, actually, that's when it does change. Because I can yes. look, well, well, I don't have to change it. That's a choice. Well, I've got a choice to change this. So, yeah, that's funny thing about allowance. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? And it is. You know, allowance is kindness. Allowance yeah. is kindness, and it doesn't make you a doormat. Kindness is not, mm-hmm. you know being the nice person you can call them whatever you want and they won't say anything back to you if you're gonna you know i i kindness for me sometimes can be hey do you know what i know that works for you it doesn't work for me so stop or go exactly. and do something like that yeah yeah yes wow kindness, that's the yeah yeah and so uh, we're coming up on our first break and i w- i'd like to put a question on the table for for people to play with um so what what are you allowing so for all the listeners whenever you're listening what are you allowing to stop you from being present with your choices from being in allowance 
of your choices. And for me, those are kind of synonymous. They go hand in hand. Um, not that they're exactly the same, but they're, they're synergistic, I, I think might be the way I could say that. Um, and would you be willing to acknowledge that with with no like expectation, as, as Alan was just saying, that you have to change it right now? Just would you like to be more aware of any place or space or choice that is not kind to you? And I wonder what we could change in the course of this conversation, if it's if it's ready, if you're ready and willing, um, to shift that, to actually increase the kindness of you, for you. Um, mm-hmm. You said something really wonderful in the in the open mic conversation too, Alan. Um, you were talking about inspiration, and you were asking the question: If you're not willing to be an inspiration to yourself, how would you expect to be an inspiration for anyone else? Mm-hmm. And I think we can also ask that about kindness in this conversation. So if mm-hmm. If you're not really willing to be kind until and unless we're we're really willing to be kind to us and actually have a sense of what that is, not just accept, you know, other people's definitions of it. Um, until and unless we're willing to to choose that, what do we really have to offer anyone else? Mm, yeah. Question. So we'll just let that kind of been around in the air a little bit while we go to break. You are listening to Living Beyond Linear because we're not really about trying to make sense of all of this, folks. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I am Keisha Clark, and I am here with amazingly awesome Alan Jones. And um, we're going to just take a little breather, and we'll be right back. What would it be like to function from the entirety of your existence? What if you included all of you in the creation of your life? the strange, the wonderful, and everything in between, with no expectation that it makes any sense. Keisha Clark invites you to Living Beyond Linear Radio Show, an exploration of what is beyond logical and explainable that actually empowers each of us to be creating, living, and loving our lives. Join in the adventures every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. What if there's nothing wrong with you? What if you're far greater than you've ever given yourself credit for? What if it's time to know the gift and the contribution you are to the world and to like yourself a lot more? Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. Asking questions opens doors to infinite possibilities. And it's not about finding the answer. It's about being the question. Always. What I'm inviting you to step into is something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Gandhi, Picasso, and Aristotle all knew to be true. What if no question is too big or too small? What if anything is possible for you? What if together we could create a kinder, gentler, happier world? Is now the time? Go to beingyouclass.com and sign up for a free video series, My Gift to You. Beingyouclass.com. What if you, truly being you, are the gift and change this world requires? Beingyouclass.com. You are listening to Living Beyond Linear Radio Show with Keisha Clark. Would you like to bring your question on the show today? Call us in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada at 613 613- 800-8736 or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also email your questions to Keisha at livingbeyondlinear.com. Now back to our show. <laughs> Welcome back, ninjas. <laughs> Ninja. Um, ninjas. My fellow ninjas. Um yeah, kindness ninjas. Um so we before the break, um, we just put the question out for folks. Um, what are you allowing to stop you from being present with your choices, from being in allowance of your choices? And um, some really interesting energies came up. <laughs> mm. And when we talk about ninja, like the I, what I love about bringing these two words together, kindness and ninja, um, you know, ninja refers to that highly skilled and fine-tuned craft, and and in the traditional application, it is talking about Japanese um, 
warriors, I believe the word might be. Um, <clears throat> but for, for us today in the world, creating our lives, creating our realities, what, how, hmm, would we be willing to develop this skill? Because I, I, I wonder if kindness is kind of like a muscle as well, or maybe consciousness is really, <laughs> in my experience, cons- consciousness has been a muscle that I have really been um, invited to tune and tone and strengthen um, as I have applied different tools throughout my life and living these last few years. And one of the place, one of the things that amazes me is how many, hmm, how many points of view, really. I want to say words. I guess words and points of view that I was using that I really wasn't paying attention to what it was actually creating in my life and what many of those things were creating, really, it turned out, were not very kind to me. Mm-hmm. And so that's part of what I love about the the whole, you know, self-development, personal development field, the whole life coaching, the, you know, changing your life, transformation stuff. Um I I love diving into stuff like that. And I love change. Um, I don't always do a happy dance about the type of change that shows up. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I actually do love change. And because I love to create. And really, those two are synonymous, creation and change. Um, You know, I say very often, I talk about what is often referred to as the quantum effect. We walk into a room and the, the energy of us just by the nature of the behavior of energy, changes what the energy of the room is. And so I wonder what we could change adding kindness, adding the energy of kindness or more of the energy of kindness. Um, And you have created this beautiful series, Kick-Ass Kindness, (laughs) which I Mm -hmm. love the name. It also goes with Ninja. Um, So talk a little bit about what brought you to this, to, to create this creation. And and how did it show up and wave at you? Sure. Um, so I've really been kind of exploring and getting curious for me about what kindness is for me for the last couple of years. And, you know, last two years really started to, to look at it. And um, in the last six months, it's become more paramount. And you know, the, I guess the more it's got more intense, more focused for me again in the last three months. So the more I kind of play with it, the more I want more of it, the more I really want to get it and be that energy. And and I've, the more I play with the energy of kindness, the more I see how potent it is and what it and the change that it can bring in the world. So um, I and originally I had created a, a program with Delaney Delaney called Where Kindness Prevails, which is like a 21 day program to help people just you know contribute to people in, and invite them to have more kindness in their life which which is awesome and i love mm-hmm. it and mm-hmm. and what where i got with this was was this year um and this this whole project came about like really quickly <laughs> it was like it kind of <laughs> took on a life of its own seriously within minutes as i'm walking around the house gathering the stuff to do my ironing so it was that there was see what i mean well i wasn't even sitting down uh-huh. and getting really serious about it i was getting the ironing board and the iron out and i like to iron with consciousness as they say and um <laughs> and I, i'm asking because i you know i get curious about things and i love asking questions all the time okay so what can i create i wonder what can i create that's never existed before that would invite and inspire more kindness in the world like okay i'm just going to put that out there and you know went back in and got my clothes and my, and my hangers and you know and that was just kind of that's mm-hmm. how it came about there was none of this significance around it going what would it be like what could i you know what could i create that's never existed before mm-hmm. and then the spark and it wasn't kind of it, the spark kind of came and go, oh i could what if i into and so you know how some of the best ideas we get we kind of immediately push away and I was thinking oh what about a tele summit mm-hmm. and you know kind of i can get all of these people together and just interview them and i could get them to share their points of view about kindness and i was you know, i was really razzed about the whole thing and then of course there were the little kind of demons that are going no oh, you know why you know <laughs> why would anyone on well and beyond you you're not kind of well renowned for tele seminars who the hell are you anyway and you're not you're not a big name and blah 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 i'm like yeah yeah whatever that is you know and i just kind of ignored that <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. So I did my ironing. I did my ironing, and um, and it was still ruminating, and I was still kind of just playing with it, still getting curious. What would it look like? What does it desire to be? And just pulling kind of what I would call energetically pulling energy into what this creation is and just remaining in the question about what desired to be created. And then I did, um, I was recording some videos with um, Tamara Younger, who does the Playground of Possibilities with me, who is one of my, you know, inspiration mm-hmm. for kindness in the world. And I said, and yes. we did, we'd finished our videos and I said, hey, look, I've had this idea, <laughs> you know, about doing these interviews with various different people and, you know, and what do you think? Her, everything about her lit up. You know, it was almost like someone had wow. put this big bell around and going, ding, 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 ding. And, and uh, Tamara was kind of like, was, you know, she was like, yeah, I think you should do it. I think it's a really good idea. I think you should do it. She said, let's do mine. Because I said, you know what, I'd really want to interview. She said, yeah, let's do mine now. Right? It's like, okay. So, so Speed of space. <laughs> <laughs> totally speed of space. And so we did her interview and I said, so do you, you know, I'm thinking about inviting kind of these, you know, and I listed a few people that I was going to be inviting. She said, Maybe, you know, do you think they would, they'd be interested in doing it? You know, with a, you know, a bit, a bit ish Oh, well, do you think they'll be interested in doing it? <laughs> and Tamara just looked at me in the way only Tamara can and just went, yeah. why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? <laughs> and that, that was, like, that. that was kind of what happened. I'm like, but do you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> so I'm just going to do this. I'm going to oh, so I crafted the emails and I sent them out to a few people that, you know, uh, that I really admire and, you know, who are kind of quite prominent in, in the world with what they do. And they all said yes. I'm like, okay. Wow. wow. No wow. going back now. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> and, then, and then the speed of this thing and they're going, can we do it tomorrow? I'm like, oh, shit. So I had to... <laughs> I'm like... So that was really funny. So I'm kind of jumping into this whole project with got to keep up, got to keep up, got to keep up. And it was a bit like, the, you know, um, uh, who was I just talking to about the train. Is that, was that you? Was that, oh, that's actually Betsy McLaughlin. That's something else that we're creating uh-huh. together. But we were talking about this kind of whole train and keeping up with the express train of, of creation. And so it has been, mm-hmm. you know, really running at the speed. And I've loved the interviews I've done so far, each and every one of them is slightly different mm-hmm. with people mm-hmm. offering their insights into what kindness is for them, where they've, where they've been inspired for kindness, where kindness isn't always what we think it is, you know, different. And I'm not mm-hmm. going to spoil it, but what people say, cause you know, watch the, watch the video. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and the, kindness, the kindness these people are being in terms of giving up their time to share these amazing kind of, insights and some brilliant tools as well you know these interviews the other thing i really want to say about these interviews is it's not just me talking to people they're offering tools and questions and processes and all sorts of stuff to help mm-hmm. just for people which you can get for free none of this is paid for it's like wow you know i can get all of this and start having more kindness in my life and all i have to do is spend 20 minutes watching a video i mean how does it get better than that um how does it <laughs> so yeah. Oh, well, and I, your, your invitation, I, I don't know if I mentioned, I think I mentioned this at the top of the show, but I, I received an invitation from you to participate in the series. Yeah. And the day that it showed up, um, just was just beautifully serendipitous. Um, the, the things had gotten really intense and I was in a space where I was just having some of that, oh gosh, you know, am I really, Am I really, what the heck was I thinking, blah, blah, blah. And then I open your your message, and it's this beautiful invitation. And I thought, wow. And, and just the invitation, the way that it landed in my universe was such a kindness. Mm-hmm. And it, it just changed my day. It, cha- it shifted my, it helped me shift my perspective and, and you know, shift the energy and, and just change where I was and what was going on and, and I and it was it was amazing. And I I love how everything when we're willing to follow that or or honor that um, those nudges um, and really choose from that space of kindness to us, everything we put out into the world from that space and that energy can create such magical generative 
expansive creations. You, you know mm-hmm. what I'm it's like it it just Yeah. And that's part of where I see that ninja type of skill is when you function from your conscious awareness of of really choosing to know what that can create, not not know what the results of creation is going to look like or be like, but just when we be in that awareness that you know what I know, I know that when I choose from this space something magical gets to happen, not only for me, but for the people that, that come to play mm-hmm. and for the people that I want to contribute to. And the, and being present with that awareness for me is becoming more of that ninja skill. Um, and and it, mm-hmm. there's kind of like this knowing that you can create something so amazing and choosing that, and you don't have to advertise it. You don't have to, you know, take out a full page ad in the paper. It's more of just you're being it, and you are changing things. You are being a, a light in the world. You are being a generative force in the universe. Um, and it doesn't it doesn't make you better or worse than anything else. It's just for me that's so much more fun. How does that? What about for you? No, I I totally get that. And, you know, with this creation, I, I didn't immediately go out in, and tell people, hey, look, I'm going to create all these kind of, you know, until I'd started doing the interviews themselves and I'd created the page on mm-hmm. Facebook to, to start to announce it when the energy asked for it. Because we do have this yeah. tendency to, when we get a really great idea about something or something that wants to be created, we love to kind of share you know, it's exciting mm-hmm. to share stuff. And it's it's not mm-hmm. that we're being big headed, oh look, I'm gonna do something about kindness. That's not what it's about, or whatever else it is that you're creating. Hey, I'm gonna create this fabulous coaching program. So when you do that, what you've got to be aware of is people around you, not everyone can receive it and not everyone is gonna be happy you're doing it. Right? Mm-hmm. And You'll get other people's points of view. Oh, really? No one's going to want to buy that. Or that's a bit expensive. Or how are you going to do that? Isn't that really difficult? You see, other people start to project their energy at you. So when it comes to being kind to you and what it is that you're creating, you've got to be looking at it and going, actually, what's required here? You know, there is something they say in Access Consciousness, which is, you know, just for me, just for fun, never tell anyone. And, Mm -hmm. you know, ninjas are often silent. (laughs) <laughs> exactly that's what I was just thinking <laughs> with that, that completeness. So, you know, if we liken kindness to, to being a ninja it's like they are highly skilled they can move without being seen they can move by mm-hmm. being seen sometimes being mm-hmm. in the plain open actually means you're more seen even though you're being unseen because you're mingling with everyone else mm-hmm. get your head around that bit so you know yep. there is that <laughs> And there's a, there's a potency in a ninja. They know exactly how much force, it, you know, to mm-hmm. use that term, in terms of what they're doing with their hands or their weapons or whatever it is, that's going to cut through, that's going to create the result that they're looking for. Sometimes you just yeah. need a gentle push. Sometimes you need the tsunami wave, which is one of the reasons why it was called kick-ass kindness, because yeah. let's kick the ass of judgment out of this world. And and not from a space of judging it. It's like, do you know what? Kick it out. Just kick it out of your life. Bye-bye. Off you go. It's like when you, you Mm -hmm. know, it's just a terminology. It's just a way of saying it. Kick judgment and the relevancy and the realness of judgment out of your life and go, do you know what? I'm being a ninja of kindness and I'm just not willing to keep making judgment real. Kick it out. And, Mm -hmm. you know, there's also, I really want to say it with real intensity, it's like, kick it out. (laughs) It's like, bang, let's go. Let's change this, people. Yes. And the, you know, yes. the fire in the sequoia wood forest that you know that people go, oh my god, you know the forest is on fire, and then the sequoia, I'm sure it's the sequoia, the little seeds are going, woohoo! I'm being burnt. I can now grow. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a kindness in in that fire that people might, in some ways, look at it, go, oh, but it's destroyed everything, and the little sequoia trees are going, woohoo! I can grow now. Now that the heat has opened yeah. me up, I can do it because that's kind yeah. for me. So. Yeah. Kindness is never. Ah. Everything is the opposite of what it appears to be, and nothing is the yep. opposite of what it to be. <laughs> Especially when it comes to kindness. Totally, and and kindness does not. Ki- kindness is not an absolute. I'm no. getting that as you were just saying that about the, the the forest. You know, there there's really nothing that I can say that I'm aware of, at least in this ten seconds, 
that is an absolute. So it's like within every energy, within every creation, within every action, there are multiple energies. There are multiple vibrations, multiple frequencies, and multiple mm-hmm. applications. And it's so fascinating because I just was getting how a lot of us are kind of geared into this expectation that kindness be an absolute. And I think that's where we get tripped up with the, the being nice thing, you know, yeah. Uh because of something that we have this expectation of what it has to look like and how the application has to be. And that just isn't true that, you know, unless we're, I mean, many of us try to make that true, but what if it's not true? What if you don't have to function from the, an absolute? What if kindness has nothing to do with an absolute of anything? Because as you say, kindness can include, you know, destruction. And if that, it's a generative destruction, and are we willing to know what a generative, destructive energy could be and deliver that or be that? And I just got chills all over my body. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> Destruction doesn't have to be necessarily kind of, you know, quote, a bad thing, you know, to destroy limitation, to destroy everywhere we've brought into limitation. And, you know, the thing when we try to define what kindness is, we immediately then start cutting off the spaces and places that kindness can be, the gift it can be to us, the gift it can be to other people. Yeah. Hey, and we Alan, 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 from, we're, yeah. we're getting a little bit of crackliness on your line, so let's um, let's jump to a break real quick because we're due for one, and would you mind, um, uh, can you call back in real quick, and let's see if we clear that line? I can indeed. Yep, I'll do that. Let's do it. All right, so while Alan's calling back in, we're getting a new vibration for Mr. Awesomeness. Uh, let's just have a nice moment, take a breath, be present with you. What kindness could you be for the next few moments, at least, <laughs> while we listen to uh, Dr. Dane here on this break? You're listening to Living Beyond Linear here on Inspired Choices Network. I'm Keisha Clark. We'll be right back with Alan Jones. Stay tuned. What would it be like to function from the entirety of your existence? What if you included all of you in the creation of your life, the strange, the wonderful, and everything in between, with no expectation that it makes any sense? Keisha Clark invites you to Living Beyond Linear Radio Show, an exploration of what is beyond logical and explainable that actually empowers each of us to be creating, living, and loving our lives. Join in the adventures every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. What if you really do change molecules by your interaction with them? What if the change you've been looking for is right before your eyes? What if the uncomfortableness that comes with difference could be fun? What if the closed-minded people of the world no longer determined our world? What if gratitude trumps judgment every time? What if your kindness healed the world? What if the earth is asking for your help? And what if you had the resources to give it? This is your invitation to step into something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Picasso, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, Aristotle all knew to be true. Hi, my name is Dane here. Thirteen years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. What if there are no dumb questions? Or any question too large? What if you being you are the gift and the change this world requires? Is now the time? For more questions to create a change in your world, sign up for a free video series at beingyouclass.com. My gift to you, beingyouclass.com. You are listening to Living Beyond Linear Radio Show with Keisha Clark. Would you like to bring your question on the show today? Call us in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada at 613-800-8736 or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also email your questions to Keisha at livingbeyondlinear.com. Now back to our show. (laughs) All right. We are back with Alan Jones, and we might still have a little bit of a squibbly on the line, so I wonder what uh, energy, space, and consciousness we can all be to contribute to clearing the frequency of this line. Hmm. What mm-hmm. kindness are we willing to choose to change the energy of this connection? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, and you were saying something so brilliant, Alan, and I wanted people to be able to hear that. So do you 
Do you remember what you were saying, or shall we just kind of jump in <laughs> where the energy um, is now? Hopefully you can still hear it. it. It's a little bit choppy at my end, and I'm I'm doing what I can to try and make it easier for people to understand if you can still understand me. Um, mm -hmm. Let me know if you can't. Um, it's a little bit crackly, but I hear you. I can hear what you're saying. Okay. I will um, do my best. So I'm kind of working magic this end and asking things to change. Mm -hmm. and we, shall, we shall see what happens. I was kind of saying that... Uh, I, I think it was all because my brain was frying as I was as I was saying it. Um, it was about trying when we define kindness, we mm -hmm. cut off various parts of it, and we cannot receive the kindness that we be. We cannot receive um, from kindness. We cannot be the kindness in the world that um, you know if we try to define everything. In this reality, we like to, to be able to define it. So that we know when we're functioning from it. If this is the definition yeah. of kindness, when I'm doing this, then I'm being kind. And if I'm doing this, then I'm not being kind, and therefore I'm being unkind. Because that again is 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 the polarity of this. You're either being kind or you're not being kind. Mm -hmm. And being unkind is always those times when you're shouting at someone or you're killing someone or you know you're not doing what somebody else wants. Yeah, these are all, and you know. I was talking to Christine McIver and we were talking about um, making things real and something I talked about there was the map is not the territory. So how yeah. you would define kindness or describe kindness, because I know you wouldn't define it, how you might describe kindness or experience kindness is going to be different to how I, how I it would experience it and how Christine and how Rhonda and, and anyone in the chat room, how they would receive it. But who is right? Which is why I wanted to pull in all of these different people and their perspectives on kindness so that people get the, the you know, they can really get the awareness of kindness is so many things to so many people. And that because someone yeah. is not doing kindness the way we think they they should or, the, or what is kind, it doesn't mean to say they're not being kind. And we have to trust our own awareness and ask, is that true for me? So the, mm -hmm. the greater, you know, it's almost like kindness is like a diamond with lots of facets to it. And from our point of view, we can, you know, if you look at it from one point of view, which may be ours, you can see maybe, I don't know, a hundred of these facets. And then Rhonda might be standing to my right and you might be standing to my left and you'll see a different hundred. You'll see some of them are the same and Rhonda will see some of them the same. But what you and Rhonda will see as kindness potentially will be kind of almost very different because, you know, you're so kind of further around the crystal as it were. And that's, you know, just to give people mm -hmm. some kind of idea to play with that. So, I love yeah. that analogy. <laughs> and so... It's like, what if we could just get curious about kindness? You know, what are the aspects of kindness that I've never considered before? What are the mm -hmm. aspects of kindness that I've never acknowledged? What are the aspects of kindness I've never experienced? What are the aspects of kindness that I can be in the world that have never existed before? Wow. Yeah. And so part of what I'm also getting is everywhere we're trying to make kindness make sense. Yeah. You know, we're trying to be have it be predictable. If I do this, it gets this result. It will make this person like me. It will be nice for this person. It will release the pressure on so-and-so. It will make their life easier, blah, blah, blah. What if kindness, like so many things about us, makes absolutely no sense? It's simply like what you were talking about. You you perceive an energy, if it's light for you, you you engage it, you start to play with it. And then you like just stick, get into the question and here's those ninja skills. You you get into the question and you you start to follow the energy. You start to see what's light. You start to and and really letting it be from and for and about you first is is one of the things I'm really playing with being is that when you're being truly genuinely kind yeah I, that i that resonates with me so much and um yeah. you know with with the whole tool of is this true for me does it feel light and expansive for me mm -hmm. and i would i would also invite people 
to explore when they've decided something is heavy. Is it heavy mm. or is it just intense? It, you know, because mm. often, I love that. you know, I, you know I, as I coach people, you know, I, I ask the question to quite, quite a lot of people, is that really heavy for you? Or is it just intensity? And sometimes it's heavy. Sometimes it's not true for them. Do you know what? That's that's cool. And yeah. it's not always going to be that way. Sometimes something is so intense because it's it's an energy we've never experienced before, and it may feel at the time almost like it's overwhelming. And so it's like, is mm-hmm. this true for me? And is it intense for me? And how can what what can I be or do different that will make this lighter for me? Because I love that. often, yeah, we will we will run away from things that feel really intense and potent because we sometimes misidentify that as being not true for us or we're not ready. Yeah. If we're honest with ourselves, we're not necessarily in that space in that ten seconds ready to choose it. And you know what? What if that's okay? What if that's okay? Yeah. What if that's okay? And what if that is truly being kind? Mm. most definitely yeah honor that wow alan we're coming to the last few minutes and i'm so excited that we got to have this conversation i'm so grateful that you and i got to have the conversation that's on your series and folks please 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 click on the link below this uh, video on the replay page and if you're listening live um please go to Facebook and look up Kick-Ass Kindness and the link will be on there for you to sign up to receive your um, links to join the videos when they go live February 1st. And I wonder what kindness it might be for you to engage this series and perhaps even play with Alan more. And there are also links below this video um, for you to be able to do that. So any any last uh, little little yumminess going on, Mr. Allen, before we uh, say good, farewell for this week? <laughs> um, I just, I, yeah, just one last thing, or two last things I would love to share with you. One is one of my favorite tools, which is Universe Show Me. So if this in any way mm. has inspired you to have more kindness in your life, to get curious about kindness, you might want to play with the Universe Show Me tool. Universe Show Me what kindness is one. for me. What's kindness for in the world? What, show me what kindness I can be in the world. Show me what kindness I can receive today. Play with that. I would really invite you to that. And you know, if you are at all interested in playing with other questions that and and kind of contribution for your kindness, you know, pop to my website and there is a link there. Um, on there is a page there called Where Kindness Prevails. Just this 21 day mm-hmm. program. It's 21 pounds. It's really not expensive. And the feedback we've mm-hmm. been getting from people playing with kindness is so yummy so and that doesn't work for you that's cool what would be kindest for you Mm -hmm. what would be kindness for you you are so welcome thank you for the kindness (laughs) (laughs) and i was just about to say that (laughs) thank you for the kindness you be in my life and in the world and on inspired choices network you can tune in to to alan and tamra on mondays folks at uh, 10 a.m eastern time and you can also find Alan in a lots of other fun things. So please, please, please play more with Alan. And I'm going to do a, a kindness for me, and I'm going to invite you folks beginning February 1st. I am actually beginning a month of pay what you choose. Um, this is something I wanted to share. I've been gone for a while over the holiday season. I was kind of out of the loop of a lot of things, and now I'm back. And so I just want to play. I want to dive in. I want to I want to talk to more peeps and play more and clear more and change more. So if you are interested in playing with me anytime in the month of February for the pay what you choose offer, you can just email me Keisha at livingbeyondlinear.com and I will send you all of the details. So you got a whole lot of choices. You got a whole lot of possibilities of kindness. What will you choose this week? And what if you could be a kindness ninja ready to come alive? Have a great week, everybody. Thank you, Alan. Thank, Thank you, you everybody in the chat. Thank, Thank you, listeners. See you next week, folks. Clark. Connect with Keisha on Facebook at Living Beyond Linear for more offerings and events to play with. And you always have a standing invitation to join Keisha each week, Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com for more adventures in Living Beyond